we are part of an international network of communities known as the 12 tribes. Our various communities are within 12 tribal regions as foretold in the scriptures. We live just like the first disciples in the book of Acts. We share all our possessions in common as they did. We work together, share our meals together, we worship together, and all the money we earn in our businesses is shared so that there are no poor among us, just as they did. We define true religion as caring for orphans and widows and being unstained by the world. We make sure our differences are resolved before we lift our hands and pray. This gives us confidence that our prayers are being heard and accepted. Unlike many churches today, in which only the pastor speaks, everyone in our communities is encouraged to speak when we gather together. No one person makes all the decisions. We submit to one another, which means we do everything together. We don't make decisions apart from speaking and listening to one another. Sadly, many Christian churches today bear no resemblance to the first pattern established by Christ's closest disciples. Only ordained ministers are allowed to speak, and there are many divisions or denominations. There are rich and poor in the churches of Christianity today, since they have no distinctive culture that sets them apart from the world. Their children embrace the fashion, music, and immorality of the world. The pattern of community was established by Christ himself and his very first apostles. They had a rich culture and heritage of their own. They had no need to embrace the world's culture. God's commandments can only be fulfilled in the context of a life together, sharing all things. This is the witness of his love and salvation, which must go to the ends of the earth in order to bring about the fulfillment of all God's instruction and his promises. Their sharing of possessions was meant to fulfill the hope of Deuteronomy 15.4. Their unity was the demonstration of Psalm 133, and their outspokenness was meant to answer the cry of Moses, that all would speak. Their care for the poor and needy has also been required of God's people in the Old Testament, but was never fulfilled. Our children grow up in a protected environment. Parents work together to teach them the ways of God. Many of our youth are embracing the life of their parents. It is a place where fathers and sons can turn their hearts towards each other, where walls are being broken down between old and young and between men and women. It's a place to belong, a place where young and old work together, a place where many races dwell together, as the prophet Ezekiel foretold. This is an actual place a location, somewhere where we can bring another person home to, a place where we cannot hide from our hurtful ways, where we can face our maladies yet still be loved and needed. Through the sufferings that come into our lives, we learn to grow more like our Master, the Son of God, becoming more and more loving as we freely choose to deny ourselves for others. This is the place where God's people live and where God lives in a people a people who are in training for eternity. We know there are many out there, just as we were, seeking God's purpose for their life. We've found the answer is simple and clear. God is doing what he has always desired to do, to gather his children together as a mother hen gathers her chicks. It is prophesied that in the last days, God himself will gather together his people and as time goes on, he will gather more and more to them. These gathered people who have given their whole lives to serve God and one another will form the Bride of Messiah as foretold in the book of Revelation. We believe this time is now, and we invite you to come and see for yourself. Please feel free to contact us or come and visit us. We'd love to get to know you.